we can rise to our feet. We're going to begin our pre-service prayer. Worthy is the Lamb that was slain for you and for me. just want to welcome everybody on this morning. We're going to uh, begin this time with just giving God what is due to him. Let's adore him. Let's give God the praise and the glory because he is worthy to be praised. I was reading my devotion this morning, Psalm 66, and it was telling us to shout glory and joyfully unto the Lord. But the part that I love in Psalm 66 is that he said he keeps us alive. God keeps us alive. The Bible says he keeps our soul among the living. And so much is going on. So many people are losing their lives. But he saw fit to keep us alive. And for that, we're going to give God glory. So just raise your hands and let's speak well of him. God, you are awesome. God, you are faithful. God, you are just. God, we love you. We give you all the praise right now, Lord God, because you are worthy. There is none like you in all the earth. There is none beside you. Worthy is the Lamb. Come on, let's speak to the Lord on this morning. You are worthy to be praised. We give you all the glory and all the honor because it belongs to you. Lord God, we love you. Lord God, we thank you, Lord God, for your faithfulness. We thank you for your peace. We thank you for your loving kindness, Lord God. Lord God, we thank you because you are great. Lord God, you are greatly to be praised. This morning, we just want to say thank you, Lord God. Before we ask anything of you, we just want to say thank you. Lord God, before we ask for anything, Lord God, we want to give you praise and give you glory because you are due the glory on this morning, Lord God. Lord God, we want to thank you, Lord God, for another opportunity and chance to come into your house of the Lord, Lord God, to give praises to you, Lord God, to learn of your goodness, Lord God, to fellowship with our fellow believers, Lord God, to give you the glory and to give you the praise on this morning, Lord God. We thank you for everyone that has assembled on this morning. Lord God, we thank you for all those that are watching online. Lord God, I pray that right now that you will remove all distractions. Lord God, that you will quiet our hearts and our minds so that we can receive from you on this morning. Lord God, we thank you for our pastor, Bishop Dexon A. Wilson and Lady Mia, Lord God. Lord God, we thank you for the first family. Lord God, we pray that you will continue to bless them, cover out your favor on their lives, Lord God, right now in the name of Jesus, Lord God. We thank you for the elevation, Lord God, that you are given to him in this church. Lord God, we thank you for our bishops, Lord God, for Bishop Douglas and Bishop Harvard. Continue to bless them in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord God. Lord God, we thank you for every elder, every minister, every deacon in this church, Lord God. We pray that you will continue to give us wisdom on how to govern your body, Lord God. We thank you for every member of Christ Family Church, every man, every woman, every child, Lord God. We thank you for every couple, Lord God. I pray that you will bring restoration and peace, Lord God, to all couples, Lord God. We pray that there will be unity in every household right now in the name of Jesus, Lord God. Lord God, we thank you for every child that is going back to school right now, every college student that has gone back to school. Lord God, I pray that you will give parents peace. Lord God, I pray that you will cover our college students, Lord God. Let them never forget the ways of the Lord as they are on campus or, or protect them as they are traveling back and forth from home to the campus, Lord God. For our little ones that are going back to school, Lord God, we pray that you will protect them and cover them in the name of Jesus, Lord God. We bind up any accidents, Lord God. We bind up bullying, Lord God. We bind up mass shootings right now in the name of Jesus. Cover our youth right now in the name of Jesus, Lord God. Touch their minds right now in the name of Jesus, Lord God. Lord God, right now we pray for your healing power, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God, that your blood still works, that your blood still has miraculous healing power, Lord God. Lord God, those that are wrestling right now, not just in their bodies, Lord God, but in their minds, Lord God, I pray that you will give them peace, Lord God. Your Bible said that you will give us a peace that surpasses all understanding, Lord God. Those that are dealing with depression and anxiety, Lord God, we bind that up right now in the name of Jesus. We arrest that spirit, Lord God, and we release your spirit of joy. We release your spirit of comfort right now in the name of Jesus, Lord God. We know, Lord God, that you have provided everything that we need, Lord God. We thank you 
for your for you providing for us lord god we thank you for taking care of our needs lord god your word declares that if we uh, know that you hear us whenever we pray, Lord God, that we already have the petitions that we're asking for. Lord God, so we're asking for your wisdom and we're asking for your peace, Lord God, right now in the name of Jesus, Lord God. Touch our bodies, touch our minds, touch our souls right now in the name of Jesus, Lord God. Lord God, we pray for every singer on this morning, Lord God. We pray for Kim Person, Lord God. Lord God, every musician, Lord God, I pray that they will sing under the anointing, Lord God. Let every word that is sung Lord God, let it be edifying to you, Lord God. Let it speak to our souls and soften our hearts to receive the word that you have coming forth on this morning, Lord God. Lord God, we pray right now even for the word that will be spoken this morning, Lord God. Let the speaker speak with authority. Let him speak with clarity, Lord God. Let him speak with boldness, Lord God. In the name of Jesus, Lord God, we thank you for your word, Lord God. We thank you for the word of the Lord that will come to to comfort us right now, Lord God, in the name of Jesus, Lord God. We even thank you for our world leaders right now and so much turmoil going on in this world, Lord God. So we thank you for, for godly counsel, Lord God. We pray that you would give our leaders godly counsel as they govern right now in the name of Jesus, Lord God. Lord God, we just want to say thank you once again. We want to say thank you, Lord God. We praise your holy name for you are worthy. You deserve the glory. You deserve the honor. Lord God, and it all belongs to you. It is your breath in our lungs. And with that breath, we will give you glory. We will give you honor. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And amen. Our scripture reading on this morning is coming from Psalms 103. And it says, bless the Lord, O my soul. And all that is within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and forget not all his benefits. There's some benefits that come with blessing the Lord. Who forgives all your iniquities, who heals all your diseases, who redeems your life from destruction, who crowns you with loving kindness and tender mercy, who satisfies your mouth with good things so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. And this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let's begin to prepare our hearts as the praise team is coming. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Did you come to bless the Lord this morning? I will sing praises unto the Lord because his love endureth forever. Hallelujah. I don't know what you came in this morning with, but I know that today is your day. Today is your day. Whatever you stand in need of, God said today is your day. Today is the day of healing. Today is the day of restoration. Today is the day of deliverance. Today is the day that you get your breakthrough. Today is that day. So if you're ready to give God some praise, I dare you to open up your mouth and shout hallelujah. Yeah, hallelujah goes right there. Give the Lord a Shabbat praise. Hallelujah. Because God says, I am ready to bless today. God said, I'm ready to heal today. All I'm waiting on you to do is praise me with your whole heart, with your whole mind, with your whole body. He's waiting on you to give him praise. Hallelujah. Yes, come on.
to the setting of the sun. Love endures forever. By the grace of God, we will carry on. His love endures forever. Sing, cry. Sing, pray.
Well, why don't we just call his name Jesus? That's who he is. He's everything to me. He's everything to me. He's everything to me. And I worship him this morning. I give him glory. I give him honor. It all goes to the Lord. Hallelujah. Jesus, He is our provider. Call the name of Jesus, He is our protector. Call the name of Jesus, He is our deliverer.
attention for? Is there anything that you need God to pay attention to in your life? All you got to do is call his name. 
when you call his name, he will give attention to it is, whatever it is that you need. Not often, but every now and then, I may call my wife and I'll get a message that says, do not disturb. But I'm so glad that when I call on the name of Jesus, he is always there. He is always available. I am never disturbing him. God is there. He just wants you to call on him. Call on the name of Jesus. Whatever it is that you need, he is waiting for you to call his name. His name is greater. His name is stronger. There is no name greater than the name of our Savior. Cancer, Jesus is greater. High blood pressure, Jesus is greater. COVID-19, Jesus is greater. Monkeypox, Jesus is greater. God is great and greatly to be praised. Let's put our hands together for our Savior. Hallelujah, God, you are so worthy. You are so worthy. Amen. I'm so glad that I serve a mighty God. Do you serve a mighty God? Now, listen, if I didn't know your God, I, that, that's not convincing. But do you serve a mighty God that is greater than anything that can confront you today? Amen. Amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. I just want to take this time to welcome you to Christ Family Church. We are so glad that you are here. Those that are watching online, we thank you for tuning in on this morning. If there are any first-time visitors, we ask if you please stand at this time. If you are visiting us for the first time, amen, amen. amen. The ushers are going to come and give us something for you. Please fill that out. We would love to stay in contact with you and just share with you the things that are going on here at Christ Family Church. On behalf of our pastor, uh, Bishop Designate Wilson and Lady Mia, we welcome you to Christ Family Church. Come on, Christ Family. You can do better than that. Amen. And for those that are watching online, we thank you for tuning in. If this is your first time tuning in, we want you to put in the chat, I'm, this is my first time, and we will reach out to you as well. Amen. Amen. It's tithes and offering time in the place of the Lord. Now, this is a very important time because it's an extension of our worship. We worship God through our giving. So there are a couple ways that you can give. You can give electronically through PayPal. You can give via our website, ChristFamilyChurch.com. Uh, if you're home and you want a mailing check, we are still taking uh, offerings and tithe through mailing. And if you're here and you want to give physically, uh, cash or check, uh, you can just raise your hand and our ushers will give you an envelope. Amen? Amen. My wife started gardening. I got to share this with you. My wife started gardening and she's growing tomatoes in the back, right? And so she grew these tomatoes and then we, we took them on, we ate them. They were, they were good. But we didn't eat all of them. Some of them we gave away, right? So we, we, we sold. I want you to understand what I'm saying here. We sold what we grew. After we plucked all the tomatoes off, it looked like it was dead. And I told my wife, I said, we're going to have to buy some more. She said, no, 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 you just got to wait. Because once you take the fruit off, it now begins to produce more fruit. As long as the fruit stayed on the tree, more fruit could not come. I think y'all missed that part. As long as the fruit remained on the tree, more fruit could not come. So when we're giving to God, the Bible says that he will give seed to the sower. And then he'll give bread for food. You don't have to worry about it. God will give to you when you give back to him what is due to him. Amen? Amen. So I want everybody to hold up their offering right now. If you're giving electronically, you hold up your device or your envelope. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord God, we thank you for this seed that we are sowing, Lord God. We thank you that you will multiply it, Lord God. Lord God, we thank you for giving to those that don't have, Lord God. Lord God, I pray that you will continue to provide for us everything that we need, Lord God, in this world, Lord God. We thank you for your blessings, for your bless blessings make us rich and as no sorrow 
Lord God, we thank you for that. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen and amen. I just want to bring your attention to a few announcements uh, on this morning. Uh, every Wednesday, we have Bible study virtually. And listen, I don't know if you tuned in this week, but Bishop Harvin gave us a word. It will speak for itself. And that was an awesome word. And that's what we get on Wednesday evenings. We get word here. So every Wednesday, uh, I believe except for the first Wednesday, uh, Bible study is virtually. So please tune in. The announcement is there online, 7.30 p.m. You can tune in and get a word. Sometimes you need a word midweek, right? You get this Sunday word, and, and then by the time Wednesday comes, some of us need some refreshing. Or maybe it's just me. But we need that refreshing. So every Wednesday... Uh, 7.30 p.m., we have our weekly Bible study. Amen? Amen. This weekend, everybody say this weekend. This weekend is our couples weekend. So our couples, we're getting together on Saturday. Now listen, I need every couple to register. You can do that right now. You can pull out your phone. Right, Lady Mia said right now. Right now. Pull out your phone and register. We're going to have a good time. Saturday, we're going to go bowling. Now, listen, we might have to put the bumpers up for you. That's fine. That's fine. We just want you to come out and have a good time. All right? And then that Sunday morning, we're going to be blessed uh, by the word by our brother Mark and uh, Spring Atwater. So we want you to come out, invite another couple. All right? We're going to have a good time. So please register. The, the registration fee for the, for the couple, not per person, but the couple is only $50. That includes the bowling and your food. Now, couples, y'all know, y'all know, $50, that's a great deal. So we're going to come out, and then we're going to have fun. We're going to fellowship with each other. Amen? Amen. Also, our teens, we have our end of the summer team outing. We're going to go to Drive Shack, and we're going to have some fun out there. So we need the teens to register as well. So register for the event. If you're a parent of a team, register your teens. Uh, on next Sunday afternoon, immediately after service. We're going to go. Drive Shack is right up the road. So we're going to ask the parents to bring your child there and then come pick them up. <laughs> Don't leave them there at Drive Shack. Come pick, come pick them up. But we're going to have a good time. And let's have our teens fellowship. It's nothing like I remember when I was younger, all the teens getting together and doing different things and having that camaraderie one with another as body of believers. Amen? A amen? Amen. Somebody say September 24th. September 24th. Yeah, yeah. September 24th, our pastor is being elevated to the role of bishop. And we are so glad and we are so excited. And we're going to come out in full force. Christ Family Church, we're going to come out in full force and support of our pastor and our first family. And then that Sunday, that Sunday is going to be our bishop celebration. And Bishop uh, Hilliard will be our guest speaker. And we have a guest psalmist, uh, I believe Melvin Crispel III, will be our guest psalmist on that Sunday. So you do not want to miss that weekend. That is going to be a high-packed a high spirit-filled weekend and as it's been mentioned over and over as our pastor elevates so does the church and so we're going to rise with the tide and we're going to support our pastor and we're going to have a great time that weekend amen amen at this time there is no children's church on this morning but the nursery is open and our teen church our teens will be having service so if you are a teen you can be released now into the back, and as the teens are being released, let's all stand and receive our pastor. Amen. Come on, let's give the Lord another good hand this morning. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. We are so honored. Uh, for God's presence being with us on the day. And most of all, we're honored that we are in, as I say all the time, the old folks would say, in the land of uh, the living. Amen. Praise God. Thank God for the blessing of our teens. Amen. That's, that's a sign of a vibrant ministry. 
when you see youth ministry that has taken uh, place. We are excited about what God is doing, particularly in this season uh, of elevation, and we encourage you in this season to connect and lock in and move with us, amen, and watch what God is going to do uh, in your life. We've got several things as has already been announced and shared. Now, your part, your part is to simply go ahead and make sure you register. And Minister Kevin mentioned we need our teens to register. We need the parents to register the teens because there's a cost to it, amen? Praise God. So, parents, please make sure you go online and go ahead and register your teenagers. It's going to be an awesome time a year in before they go back to school. It's going to be a good time of fellowship uh, as well. Let me say thank you again for all of the visitors that are joining us again on this morning. I see some second-time visitors. Good to see you all on the day. God's blessings to you, and we pray that you will continue to come back and worship uh, with us and invite some others to come out and join with us as well, uh, too, as well. Amen. Praise God. I think I see our son and daughter in the back just slipped in, uh, Tierra and Justin. Praise God. Good to see you all on uh, this morning. My wife uh, saw you all on yesterday at the wedding. Tierra, she said, you look so beautiful. Amen. You look nice too, Justin, but she said, Tierra, you look so beautiful. Good to have the both of you in service uh, on uh, today. We want to take an opportunity just before we introduce our guests that will be sharing on this morning uh, to invite uh, two individuals to come up if they're here uh, this morning. Monte, if you're here this morning, and I want uh, Tashika, did I get that right? All right, you all come on up to the front. We want to honor the Lord for the both of you all on the day as we share in our new members. Just come right here. You all can stand right here. I know we're putting you all on the spot, but we do that because we feel a membership is very important. And we also do it to give the membership an opportunity to see who you are because we believe in connection. Number one, you connect then you engage, and then you'll experience God's blessings in your life as it pertains here to the Christ Family Church. I'm excited uh, because the Bible says those that are planted in the house of the Lord, they will flourish. And we believe that God is a God that causes us to flourish. The Bible says that Jesus came that we may have life and have life more abundantly. So we believe that the church you're connected to is also critical in you experiencing that abundant life. That's why we take the time to pause and acknowledge you joining. You've gone through your new members class, and on this morning as we present these certificates to you, I'm going to also pray and bless you as well. Let me read the certificates, and then I'll come down and pray and bless you. Certificate of membership, this certifies that having completed and confessed Jesus as Lord and Savior and having expressed the intention to continue in covenant in not only baptism but also in membership in the congregation here at Christ Family Church to worship God, to hear the word, and also to share God's word. We welcome you here as membership in Christ Family Church. Christ Family Church, 760 Reedy Creek Road, the Reverend Patricio Wilson, MDiv, Senior Pastor. We welcome you on uh, this morning. I'm going to come down and pray with you. Father, we thank you for the blessing of membership, and as we lay our hands on them, we pray your blessings upon them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. God, I declare God greatness for them, God, as they connect even to this house. Father, we honor you and we bless you in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. God bless you. We love you here. Blessings to you. Amen. You turn and face the congregation and receive your certificates. Come on, CFC, let's give them a good hand. Come on. And if you're sitting next to them, make sure you pound them or embrace them on the way back to their seat on this morning. Amen. Praise God. Well, we honor the Lord for the teaching and preaching moment, and I'm so honored to have uh, this young man, this pastor, this uh, husband, and this friend come to share the word of God. Uh, in the month of August, I get an opportunity to take a little break and simply not have to preach uh, every Sunday. Sometimes I do, but particularly in August, we try to have some guests uh, come in as well as our ministers sharing during uh, the course of the Wednesday evening of Bible study. So again, I can get a break from the teaching time. And as I thought about someone that could come and share the word of God uh, with us, there was a name that came to me, which was my good friend and brother, Pastor Juan Cherry. 
Pastor Juan Cherry is the senior pastor of New Creation, a Christian center there in Shelby, North Carolina. Uh, not only is he the senior pastor, but he's a faithful husband. He's a faithful father as well. He is dual. Not only does he pastor, but also uh, works in the professional field of a counselor. He works as a guidance counselor there at Shelby uh, High School. Received not only his undergrad from the great institution. You know where I'm going with this, Rod, NC Central. Graduate, all the blue in this church and gold. He graduated from the great institution of North Carolina A&T State University. Amen. Praise God. <laughs> So we're, we're, oh, I forgot you got another uh, central person here in Kim, but it's an honor to have uh, my brother and my friend alumni from uh, central, uh, North Carolina A&T State University, but also received his master's degree uh, as well, also in counseling as well. I'm just excited. He's also an author. He's got some of his books, Wired for Success. Uh, you want to grab that book. There's a whole lot in the area of mentoring. Also, also teaching professionally to educators, but those individuals that aspire to be successful, whether it's in business or whatever particular career interest that you are in, he is the man that God has gifted uh, to do that, not only as a pastor, but also as a mentor, really as a coach. And I'm just honored to have him here on uh, this morning. So I want us to just put our hands together, receive Pastor Juan Chair as he comes in his own way. try that again. Good morning. Uh, we're going to do it one more time for the people in the back. Good morning. Y'all doing good? Amen. Okay, I am. I'm trying to get my notes to come up. This day is amazing. This day is amazing. Uh, you, you don't even know why, but I'm going to tell you. Um, if you give me a second, though, I got I to gotta do this. I got to I got to do this. <laughs> y'all don't understand. I'm at CFC. I'm at Christ Family Church. I watch y'all online. I hang out with y'all. I follow you on Instagram. I see what you're doing. You're not being antagonistic. Just give him that seat while he's doing it. Once you get it with the congregation behind you. Okay. Both of us in there. Okay. All right. Yeah, we don't do this all the time. This is for this time. He'll explain why. Don't tell Bishop. They may keep me from being consecrated. Sure. Okay. Let me give you the back story. I'm the member y'all never met. This is my church, too. Let me explain to you why. When I was 19 years old and a sophomore at NCANT State University, <coughs> Aggie Pride, yeah, yeah. I was lost. And this man, as lost as I was as a sinner, he would never condemn us. I had a little group that I hung out with. He would walk in and we would be not Bible studying, but you know, <laughs> whatever unsaved young men do on campus, we would be doing our thing. And he was just like, man, come on, y'all gonna kill yourself, man. He's like, come on. And he never condemned me. And then he came to us and he said, listen, I'm preaching my initial sermon, January 18th, 1987. I need y'all to come. And on January the 17th, 1987, which was a Saturday night, we were doing unchurched stuff. The most unchurched stuff I ever did. For some of y'all that don't understand Everclear. I'll leave that right there. And I don't know how, but somewhere in the night, one of the guys said, man, we still got to go to church in the morning. And I don't know how we all got up and we went to church. But we got up and we went to the service that morning and he preached heaven or hell. You got to choose which way you're going to go. And I was, I remember where I was. You were standing, I was sitting over to your left about three quarters of the way back and he gave an altar call. And all I remember doing was sobbing because I just knew I didn't want to die. I don't remember taking a single step, but the next thing I know I'm standing up front getting saved.
listen, I was so unchurched when they finally said, okay, now y'all is getting saved. We're going to take you. I said, is that what I'm doing? I didn't know what I was doing. All I knew was I wanted something different. And since that time, I've been saved. And I'll say this, I've watched, I've watched Pastor Pat for years, man, and, and I've always esteemed you very highly, but to Lady Mia as well, you guys have been the ones since day one for me. Mia, you carry this church in the inside of you. You carry this church like it's your baby. And sometimes it gets difficult. But your labor is not in vain in the Lord. <laughs> sometimes it's like when Mary was covering Jesus. Come carrying Jesus. They, it was on the donkey. Can you imagine what that was like? You ready to deliver and you riding this animal. That's the way you felt, but your time is coming. And what God has said to you shall be. You've been groomed for this all your life. God's prepared you all your life. And you, because it's not matched what you saw. Am I making sense to you? But God says he's going to make you see what you've seen. Okay, let me go. Okay. Okay. Let me tell you just a little. I, I ain't got much time. Let me tell you a little bit about, about me. Uh, he mentioned my wife. She gives her regrets. She couldn't be with us this morning. Uh, she, she's at the house in Shelby. And uh, I've got two wonderful adult children. My daughter's 25. She's getting an interior architectural degree at, at UNCG. And uh, my son is a former uh, military man did seven years served a tour in Iraq and Afghanistan and he and his wife have three daughters and uh, he's doing IT work now and, and I just got to tell you about my folks this is going to help you understand who I am uh, my daughter-in-law is a dental hygienist and they're doing that thing I got a I got a 14 year old granddaughter y'all that started high school this year and she is a beast on the soccer field I mean she is a beast on the soccer her goal is to go to Stanford or Carolina and let me tell you something, if she does not do it athletically, and she can, she would definitely do it academically. So we're not tripping over that. That's my people. I got, I got two, two other granddaughters. I got a six-year-old and a two-year-old. That six-year-old is a mess, let me tell you. She is a mess. I made pancakes for her the other day. She spent the night at our house. When, when she spends the night, you got to have pancakes. That's just the way it is. And my wife was going to work, hadn't gone back to school yet, so I was the pancake man. So on pancake duty, I cut the butter to put it in the pan. She says, no, Poppy, Nana doesn't use butter. She uses spray cooking oil. So I said, okay, are we going to eat these pancakes or not? Because Poppy's using butter. And so I finished the pancake, and she said, Poppy, who's going to eat that? And so I grabbed a box of cereal, and I said, I'm going to put the cereal here, and the pancake is here. Choose you this day. Let's just say she enjoyed the pancakes. <laughs> and my son texts me a couple of days later, and out of the blue, she said, you know, pancakes with butter taste just as good as pancakes with the cooking spray. That, that's my people, okay? And then my two-year-old, she's a mess. She, she, she's, just, she's just hurt. And um, just a little bit more. Are y'all okay? Just a little bit more. Uh, I got to tell you this. Um, we've been pastoring 17 years in Shelby. We... Uh, <laughs> We built a church, um, started in around 2012, finished it in 2014, I believe, moved in in the fall of that year, and we built a church, and we paid it off in five years. Our church is totally debt-free. We sit on 16.24 acres of land, totally debt-free. We don't owe anybody anything in ministry. I'm telling you this for a reason. 
Uh, I've got some, some copies of my book here, Why for Success, Equipped to Fulfill What You Have Been Created to Accomplish. My daughter designed the cover, about 25 year old. She's doing some graphic stuff. This will bless you. It'll change your life because you have been equipped to do whatever God's called you to do. If you learn how, listen, a lamp that's not plugged in is not going to turn on. But when you plug that baby in, it's going to do whatever it needs to do. This book teaches you how to plug in. That's not, I'm not doing that, though. It's not about the sales. Uh, I've got another book, you might not know this, just released on Amazon this week called So You Want to Be a Mentor, for all of you that mentor kids and mentor others. And then I've got one in the, in the hopper that hadn't come out yet, and it's going to be called Intentional Design. Y'all still okay? Yeah. All right, and then a couple weeks ago, I went down to Atlanta. I got a friend who does a studio, and we did an audio book. So I did Why for Success audio, and I'm in the, I got my, my headphones on, and I'm hearing my stuff. Now, let me tell you why I'm saying that. I'm not bragging. But what I'm telling you is, if he hadn't did what he did in 87, I wouldn't have done anything that I've done with my life. You never know who you're impacting when you take a chance on somebody that doesn't look like they have it together. They might just shake the world. Never take anybody for granted because God has a purpose for everybody. And you could be the one that set somebody into their destiny. All you got to do, you ain't got to preach first, just smile first. You ain't got to preach first, just be nice first. The problem with some Christians is we're not nice. Oh, let me tell you this. Some of y'all are like a great COVID test because a great COVID test is negative. Some of y'all are so negative. I'm sorry, let me get in this. Let me get in this. You shout when it's COVID, but you ne you're negative in your life. Okay, let's, I'm sorry. Let's, let's get in this. Ma'am, this is your first time visiting here, and I'm so sorry you're not going to get to hear Pastor Patricio. So you got to come back now. You're obligated to come back to see what really happens here, because I'm all I can do is what I can do. So, you know, I hope I don't run you off, but next, you know. Next week. This morning, I, I got a word, and I'm going to share it with you. And um, the title of the message today is, All You Need is a God Said. All you need is a God Said. Genesis chapter number one. We're going to start reading at verse number one. If you don't mind, I'm going to skip a couple verses because I'm going to make a point. Then I'm going to hit you with three points. And if you listen real carefully, I might give you the fourth, but I'm thinking just three. Genesis chapter one, verse number one. What's the title of the message? All you need is a God said. All you need is a God said. As I was sitting there, and the, the worship team was, you guys were, you guys were blessing me. And, and thank you, man, for what you were doing. You guys are amazing. And while you guys are singing, and as, as, uh, as, as the brother was giving the announcements and telling you what was happening, I was texting my wife, and I'm like, I was like, baby, I'm tripping. Because I'm at CFC with Pat and Mia, and this ain't even, I've been dreaming about being on this blue carpet, because I see it online all the time. <laughs> I just couldn't wait to get, the half wasn't told me, you know? But let me get in the word, I'm sorry. Pastor Pat has never heard me preach. And he's trusted me to stand and share a word with you guys today. I don't take that lightly. Genesis chapter number one, verse number one. Y'all ready? In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Verse number two, the earth was without form and void, and darkness was on the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. Verse number three, then God said, let there be, what did he say? Say it again. What did he say? Okay, some of y'all reading out of King James, New King. I got you. Verse number six. Then God said, let there be a firmament in the midst of the waters and let it divide the waters from the waters. Thus God made the firmament and divided the waters which are under the firmament from the waters which are above the firmament. And it was so, verse number nine, we're going to skip. Then God said, let the waters under the heavens be gathered together into one place and let the dry land appear. And it was so, verse number 11, let's do it again. Then God said, let the earth bring forth grass, the herb that yields seed and the fruit tree that yields fruit according to its kind, whose seed is in itself on the earth. And it was 
So, verse number 14, then God said, let there be lights in the firmament of the heavens to divide the day from the night, and let them be for signs and seasons and for days and years. Verse number 15, and let them be for lights in the firmament of the heavens to give light on the earth. And it was so. Verse 20, then God said, let the waters abound with an abundance of living creatures and let the birds fly above the earth across the face of the firmament of the heavens. <laughs> 24, then God said, let the earth bring forth the living creature according to its kind, cattle and creeping things and the beasts of the earth, each according to its kind. And it was so. Verse 26, then God said, let us make man in our image. According to our likeness, let them have dominion over the, if you're not winning, you're not right. Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. Creation, ladies and gentlemen, is a manifestation of God. And every manifestation of God began with the word. We see in this chapter 10 times where the scripture says, God said. 10 times, God said. And every time God said, it was so. I say this to our people at home. When God spoke to the heavens, the stars were created. When God spoke to the waters, Fish were created. When God spoke to the ground, vegetation was created. But when God speaks to us, we say, huh? Yeah. Why is it that everything obeys God's word but us? Carpenters use wood. They use nails. They use hammers. And they use nail guns. Masons use brick, mortar, and trowels. Artists use paint, clay. They use music, dance, other forms of expression. They use what they use to create what they create. God uses word. The same way a mason uses brick, God uses word. <laughs> This is where we miss it, though. See, God uses his word to create. Hebrews 11 and 3 says, by faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God. Framed. Ha <laughs> ha. Come on now. When you have a building, they're called stick built. I don't know if y'all know anything about building. I ain't know anything about that. Just build me a church. I ain't understand stick built. You want a stick built? Okay, whatever it takes. Give me a stick big built. But this is what happens with a stick built. You put the frame up with the two by four. And so when you see it in the process, you got two by fours all where the walls will be. Right. But then before you move in, you got to put the you got to put the drywall up. You got to put the insulation in. Are y'all with me? Yeah. And then you put the bricks on the outside. But it's held together by the sticks. <laughs> the worlds were framed by the word of God. You see what happens when you look at the walls, you can't see the sticks. And you got to understand when God creates things by word, you forget that the word is what's holding it all together. There's a word behind everything that God, ah, oh, there's a word behind it. And when you understand the word behind what you need, you'll learn how to hold on to that word. The sticks are holding this thing together. Don't get it twisted. Drywall ain't doing this. It's the sticks, baby. It's the sticks. And when you look at your life, it's not your good looks that's keeping you together. It's not your skill that's keeping you together. It's the word that's holding everything together. Because the Bible says that all things, uh -huh, Hebrews 1 and 3 says, are framed by the word. It says God upholds all things. By the word of his power. Why are you tripping? You got a word. Now I'm not going to say anything you haven't heard before. Because I know Pastor Pat preaches. But I just want to remind you of some things about God. This is the revelation. God is completely self-existent. And he's totally self-contained. You know what that means to me? Any of God contains all of God. I got to give you that again. 
any of God contains all of God. You can't get a piece of God that doesn't have all of God in it. Okay, I'm gonna have, this is going to make sense in a minute. I like to talk about food. You ready? Have you ever had the hamburger heartbreak? Let me explain to you the hamburger heartbreak. Can you, how many like cookouts? Not the restaurant cookout, cookouts, you know, at home. You know, cookouts, barbecues. See, I grew up on cookouts. Y'all probably, y'all grew up with money. Y'all do barbecues. We, we did cookout. That's where you got the little grill. Okay, so the hamburger heartbreak is this. Because you know the hamburger, when you do that, you got the big, you got the kind of big burgers, you know, when you make them at home. Not the little skinny when you buy it. The restaurants, you got the big ones, right? And so when you put it together, you got your man, you got your mayonnaise. Okay, now if y'all doing a miracle whip, we're not talking to y'all because we do <laughs> Dukes and JFJ. You, that's you know. So so you put the mayonnaise on the bread, okay? And then you kind of lay your stuff on it. You might have your lettuce, and then you might put your you put it under there so the the meat will hold it down. So you ain't got all this stuff happening. But so then you build it, and then you put your your burger on it, right? And then you start adding to the top. So then you might put your onions or then you might put your cheese or whatever else. You got to have your ketchup, right? And so you put it all together. Then you put that bun on the top. And I got some people in my church, when they have a cookout, you got to put their bread on the grill. They're not just pulling it out of a bag. It's got to, so you got to have a little heat to it before you put it on there, right? We still talking about the hamburger heartbreak. So it's going to make sense in a minute. And so when you put it all together and you bite in it, it's good, right? And it's, you know, you know, it's good when you look at it, when you eat it. Have you ever seen the people, they eat and they just, they just look, I don't know what they expect to happen, but they watching it like it's going to run or it's going to move. So they just looking at it, right? And so you eating it. And then all of a sudden what happens is you take a bite and it's good, but then you get ready to take the last bite and all the burger's gone. And now all you got is everything that surrounded the burger. Aren't you glad that there's no hamburger heartbreak when it comes to God? He's not going to give you just the bread and the mayonnaise and the lettuce. But if you get a piece of God, you got all of God. It's going to make sense in a minute. It's going to make sense in a minute. It's going to make sense in a minute. Wouldn't it be terrible to need God and get everything but what makes him God? What if we were sick and got the peace of God that didn't contain healing? What if we're upset and got a piece of God that didn't contain peace? What if we were in sin and got the peace of God that didn't include salvation and forgiveness? God told Moses, tell him I am that I am and not I'm some of what I could be. What if he told God said he is something of what he could be? <laughs> God is a one piece puzzle. I got to give you that again. God is a one-piece puzzle. You ain't got to put nothing together. He's totally self-contained. Mm. But this is where we're going with this. We sometimes feel let down when all we get is a word. And when that happens, you miss the point. Because God's word is God. I wanted a blessing and all I got is a word. When you understand that God is totally self-contained, when you get a word, you got a blessing. Okay, I'm, I'm hurting. In the beginning, God said, right? Jesus came into the world as the Logos, which is word. Okay, y'all detecting the theme? When the Holy Ghost came in Acts, what happened? They spoke. Every manifestation of God comes with the word. Yeah. Okay. Okay. We want signs and wonders and miracles, but a word is a miracle in the making. Right. See, I don't bake. I eat, but I don't bake. Now, if anybody got a cake baking gift, see me. See, bakers can look in the cabinet and see a cake. I can't see it till it's on the plate. 
But when you know what you're doing, you can look at what you have and see what you need. When we understand that God is totally self-contained in his word, some people can only see letters, but I see everything that God has promised me when you understand the power of a word. <laughs> word is seed. I didn't got to a point. I'm sorry. I'm going to sit down in a minute. Word is seed. It's the foundational life-giving source of what we need. If I give you an apple, all you have is an apple. But if I give you a seed, I give you the potential to produce all the apples you will ever need. Word is seed. Watch this now. If you give a man a fish, you fed him for a day. But if you teach him how to fish, you fed him for a lifetime. Are y'all with me? Now, let's keep riding this now. If you give a man an apple, you fed him for a day. But if you give him an apple seed, ha, ah, you've given him the ability to create everything he needs. When we finally understand that God is not given the finished product, but God is given seed. And when God gives you a seed, you have everything that you need. Ah, here it is. When you give a man an apple, all he has is a snack. But when you give him a seed, you give him a future. And some of us, when God gives us a word, he gives us a future. But we find ourselves hoping for and missing snacks. I told y'all a few minutes ago that I recorded my, uh, my audio book a few weeks ago, right? But can I tell you something? The Bible is the world's first audio book. Because it'll speak to you. You might ever had this book speak to you? See, if it hadn't spoken to you, you ain't got faith. Because the Bible doesn't say faith comes by reading. <laughs> faith comes by hearing. See, you ain't got faith till you heard. thing will speak to you. And when it speaks to you, you have what you need. Let me, let me give you just a few, just a few, just a few, just a few. Why do we need a God said? You ready? I got uh, maybe three. I might cut it down to two. All you need is a God said. The first thing you got to understand is this. God says have creative power. It's the ability to make something out of nothing. God created everything from nothing through the creative power of his word. Can you imagine what it was like to be God and not have anything but have everything at the same time? God wasn't intimidated by nothing because he knew who he was. Everything that you see came from God. God's imagination must be absolutely crazy because he had to see it and then say it and then be able to recognize it and say it was good. Why? Because he saw it, then he said it, and then he recognized it and said, that's good. Why? Because it was just like he saw it before he said it. God speaks to nothing and creates everything. God walked up on Gideon and said, you mighty man of valor. Gideon was hiding, threshing wheat in a wine press. Why? Because God saw something in Gideon he didn't see in himself. I used to go home and I would get upset at school because y'all see how tall I am, right? And I would come home and i say, Mama, they calling me short. Don't laugh. Anybody remember when you had to line up shortest to tallest in school? That was just so wrong. You don't understand what you're doing to people. But my mama would tell me, baby, it's not what they call you. It's what you answer to. And the problem with some of us is God is calling us mighty man and mighty woman of valor, and we're not answering. Ah. But when you learn how to answer to what he's called you, God's word has creative power. It's not just information. It's ability. Okay, let's, let's keep riding. 
Let's keep riding. God can turn nothing into something with his word. You know how I know? Did it to me. I was a nobody. Till he called me something. He just, it wasn't that I was nothing. He saw something I couldn't see. And he spoke to what he saw. And when I believed what he saw, I became what he said. Okay, let's, let's keep riding. 17 years ago, God said, start a church. He wasn't just giving me direction. He was creating a church in me. Because whatever God says to you, he's doing in you. How many guys ever said something to you that's big? Anybody? Let me see your hands if God has called you to something big. Let, 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 y'all, y'all, he called you to big things, but you got a little hand raised. Come on. He called you something big. You know what that means? See, God is doing to you like my mama used to do. She would buy me clothes that I could grow into. When God calls you something that feels like it's bigger than you are, it's because you're going to grow into it. Ah! He's dressing you for your potential and not for who you are right now. So if God has ever called you to something big, realize, ooh, I'm getting ready to be big. Why? Because it's not just information, it's ability. I'm hurrying. God spoke to nothing. <laughs> it became one cherry. And everything in my life was born. That's the first point. What was it? God's word, God says, have created power. Second point, you ready? Here it is. This is my favorite. God said, become God did. <laughs> God said, become God did. Okay. I'm still tripping because I'm at CSC with Pastor Pat and Lady Mia. Man, this is crazy to me. John 1 and 1 says, in the beginning was the Word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by who is him? Who is what? Oh, because y'all saw it in Genesis 1. He said it was, right? And then John 1 is telling you what was going on. In the beginning was the word. So the word was doing what you see in John so it's spelled out in Genesis. Why? Because carpenters use wood, masons use brick, artists use paint, but God uses word. So what you got to understand is God says become God did. This is going to blow your mind. Watch this now. How did, how did the said become the did? Because in John 14, and the word was made flesh. In the beginning it was a said, but in John 1 14 it was a did because the word became flesh. Do you know what God's trying to do with you with the word that he's given you? He's trying to get it from a said to a did. He's trying to get what he said to you to become flesh in your life. Come on now, whatever he says he's expecting to become. Watch this now. Jesus came as the Logos. He came as the Word, and then the Word became flesh. Why? Because the setting always precedes the doing. The thing said always precedes the thing done. Okay. Sometimes we miss what God wants to do because we're looking for God did and not listening for God said. Says become deeds just like the word becomes flesh. The thing you're looking for God to do starts with what God said. Okay, now let's try this. How many got some God says over your life? Let me see. You got some God said? Are you feeling better about them now? Because God starts everything with a word. How do you get a God said to become a God did? Watch this. Have y'all you, you ever heard of the woman with the issue of blood? Wouldn't it be crazy to go down in history being named a woman with the issue? 
That's like being called diabetic Dan. Or high blood pressure Helen. You understand? You get named blind Bartimaeus. How insensitive could that be? You understand what I'm saying? You get named by your cause. But watch this now. The Bible says there was a woman with the issue of blood. And she had given to all the doctors all of her money. And we get on the woman and say she shouldn't have spent all that money on the doctor. No, she was trying to be healed. And according to what she knew, they were the ones that could do it. And so she spent all she had on the one that should have been able to do what she needed to do. Watch this now. This is the same woman. Ah, ah, ah. You got to get this. She was willing to spend her money, and the same mentality is what got her healing. Why? Because she was willing to do whatever she had to do to get what she needed. If it was money, I'm going to spend it. Why? Because I want what I want. The problem with some of us is we don't want it. Okay, I'm getting to mess up now, Pastor Pat. I'm sorry, but. Tupac Shakur had a song that says, how do you want it? Some of us say we want stuff, but if your want don't make you do, if your want is not, I got to stop. It's time to go. Hold on. Let's do something. But when she heard of Jesus, the woman with the issue, when she heard of Jesus, Who was Jesus? Say it again. The word. Why? Because sins become deeds. When she heard of Jesus, when she heard the word, she got in the press. Why? Because sins become deeds. This is what you got to understand. When God gives you a word, you got to get to it. And the Bible says there were people thronging him and people were all around. And she said, if I could just touch the hem of his garment, I shall be made whole. Where did she get that from? Malachi says, Malachi says that the sun shall rise with healing in his wings. That word wings means garment. She was in the book. She said, if I could touch his wings, I'm going to be made whole. Why? I spent my money on the doctors and it didn't help me, but now I got another word. And when she got this other word, she got in the press behind. Now, you got to understand, when you got an issue, you ain't supposed to be in public. We said, no, 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 baby, you don't understand. I've been by myself a long time. And I found, I heard something that might change my life. And so she got in the press behind. And she got, and she touched him. And Jesus said, who touched me? Peter said, come on, Doc. All these people out here. And you asking who touched you? Everybody touched you. He said, no. There was something about something different about this one. Because when she touched me, something left me. Boom. Do you know how powerful God? God can heal you and not even mean to. He felt his healing leave. He didn't even focus on her. For all y'all that want God's attention, you missing the point. He can do what you need without even focusing on you when you know how to touch. What does touch mean? Ha. Ah, she grasped it. You know, they say you got to wrap your mind around it. She made up her. How do you wrap your mind around the word? You got to make up your mind. This is for me. Some of y'all don't want it because you can wait till tomorrow. Some of y'all don't want it because you can wait till next week. Some of y'all don't want it because you can wait till next year. But if you wanted it, you would do something different. She said, if I can touch him, I'm going to get what I need. And she got in the press and she touched him. Now, how does this make sense? Because we ain't, we, we ain't in the crowd. When you can wrap your mind around a word, you can get what that word has for you. Now, before you get happy, watch this now. Just because it makes sense doesn't mean you can understand it. Watch this now. Just because it makes sense doesn't mean you can understand it. She believed she could be healed even though she didn't understand how it was going to happen. You ain't got to understand how it's going to happen. Just know it can. I don't know how God's going to bless me. I just know he can. I don't know who he's got to move. I don't know who he's got to touch. I don't know who he's got to say something to. But if I can touch him, I'm going to have what I need. Yeah. 
Ah, look at somebody say, if you can grasp it, you can have it. She understood she could be healed. She just didn't know how. Okay, let me give you this last one. I'm going to sit down. God said, turn failures into life-changing experiences. Anybody ever lost? Anybody ever lost? I mean, come on, let's be for real. Anybody ever lost? Now, I'm going to apologize because sometimes I can go places, but there was a song out years ago that says, all I do is win, 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 no matter what. I flipped it and made it spiritual. Got Jesus on my mind and I'll never give it up. Because every time I come into the building, I just have to throw my hands up. <laughs> and they stay there. And they stay there. Wouldn't that help you praise the worship if we came in like that? All I do is win, 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 no matter what. There you go. Sometimes we lose. But God says can turn failures into life-changing experiences. Do you remember those boys, Andrew and Peter? Been fishing all night. I'm sorry, Michael Jackson got me working, working day and night. <laughs> boys were fishing all night. They were cleaning their nets, and Jesus popped up and said, I need to use your boat. Peter said, all right, we ain't doing nothing. Jesus got in the boat, pushed out a little bit, and taught a lesson, right? Got finished teaching the lesson, and then looked at Peter and said, now, launch out into the deep for a catch. And I could imagine Peter said, now, hold on now. You stick to preaching, and I'm going to stick to fishing. Now, we done fished all night and caught nothing. You gave a good word right here. Stay in your lane. He gave Peter a word. Now, let me tell you the problem with a word. The hardest word to get is the word that tells you to do what you've already done that didn't work. <laughs> and the thing you got to understand about God is God might not give you a new idea. God might tell you to do what you've already done. And the question is, can you do what he said when you already tried it and it didn't work? Y'all want something new. What else is he going to tell a fisherman other than fish? Okay. So Peter, like many of us, said, Now, Master, we done tore it all tonight. But can you flip it? Nevertheless. Anybody got a nevertheless? A nevertheless is when what you said doesn't make any sense because I know who said it. I'm... Okay, here we, are. here we go. Don't allow last night to keep you from experiencing what God wants you to have this morning. <clears throat> Some of your past is so powerful, your future is in jeopardy. Because you can't do anything new because all that old stuff is still cropping up. Don't allow the fact that you didn't catch fish make you believe you can't catch fish. Can I tell you it was a setup? This whole thing was a setup. You know why Peter didn't catch fish the night before? Because Jesus had to blow his mind the next day. So I believe that Jesus told the fish the, day, the night before, don't get in that boat. I don't care what he does, don't get in that boat. Because I'm trying to show him something. Here it is. Your failures were a setup. God had you failing because he had set stuff up that you couldn't succeed. Because if you'd have done it when you... If you'd have done it that night, you'd have thought it was all about you. But you realized in your strength you couldn't make it happen. And when he got to the end of himself, he said, listen, I know I can't do it. Some of y'all, when you get to the point that you finally realize you can't do it, that's when it'll get done. Because you won't be trusting your own ability. You'll be trusting a word. And Jesus said, launch out into the deep for a catch. Why? Because he already had the fish ready. What if he had not launched out? He, the fish would have been there waiting for him, and we never would have read the story, and the fish would have been there for eternity, and we not have not even known it. God, oh, here it is. Some of y'all got provision in the spot that God told you to go get it, but you didn't go get it, and you felt like God didn't do it. Tell your neighbor to go get your fish. He had.
had the fish waiting for him. He didn't say fish. He said drop the nets. He's going to streamline the instruction. Just drop the net. When are we going to stop letting last night's affect what we do today? Peter almost allowed what didn't happen to determine what couldn't happen. If you give your past too much power, it's going to create your future. I got to say that again. That's, that's, if you give your past too much power, it will create your future. When you quit, you create, oh, okay, here it is. When you quit, you create the ending. Can I give you that one more time? When you quit, you create the ending. Y'all think about quitting because you're losing. But ain't no good sports movie till they behind. You don't go to see, y'all remember, remember the Titans? It wouldn't, have been, it wouldn't have been as good if they hadn't been losing that last game, right? What if they were up 50 points at halftime? We could have cut the movie off. But they were behind in the last few seconds and said, Rev, I want you to get that ball. And I want you to run. And when they put Rev in, the coach got to tripping. Oh, he's in there. Why? Because if you always win and you won't appreciate the comeback. Winning is sweeter when you were behind. Winning is sweeter when you were losing. When it was sweeter when you thought about giving up, has anybody felt like giving up lately? <laughs> Peter, Andrew, and James, and John caught more fish than they ever caught in their life, not because they were professionals, but because they acted on a God said. If you want God to exceed your expectation, don't trust your ability, trust his word. I got one more. Can I give you the last one? Okay. Okay. Okay, here, here it is. <clears throat> God says are guarantees of God's faithfulness. Y'all missed that. Y'all missed that. God says are guarantees of his faithfulness. <clears throat> My mom would tell me stuff when I was a little boy. She said, I'm going to do this for you. And I said, Mama, do you promise? She said, no, I don't promise. She said, because if I tell you I'm going to do something, I'm going to do it. I ain't got a promise. So I think about what I'm going to say before I say it. So that when I say it, it's a done deal. So you ain't got to ask me if I promise, because if it comes out of my mouth, it's going to happen. Some of us are scarred because we've gotten promises that didn't happen. Because our parents promised us stuff, trying to please us, that they had no ability to get done. And so now we feel like God is unfaithful because we've had a track record of unfaithfulness. But what you got to understand is that God is not a man that he should lie. Neither is he the son of man that he should repent. If he said it, he'll do it. And if he spoke it, he shall bring it to pass. Bob says there are two immutable things, but God cannot lie. You know why God can't lie? Because he swore by himself. You know how it is when you're a kid? I swear to God. God said, I swear to I swear to me, I'm going to bless you. <laughs> My dad, bless his heart, was an alcoholic for most of his life. He got saved. Uh, he got saved, had a great relationship before he passed away. You know, my dad and I were close. He, you know, he had a little trouble with alcohol early on, but he got himself together, got saved, had a great relationship. But my dad was this way. When my dad wanted you to believe something, he said, I swear on a bowl of black eyed peas. And when he swore on a bowl of black eyed peas, you could count it done. Don Cornelius said, and you can bet your last money. It's all going to be a stone gas, honey. Y'all remember Soul Train? Let's get, I'm, I'm finished. Let's go. I'm sorry, Pastor. I'm, I'm sorry, y'all. I'm sorry. God says it guarantees of God's faithfulness. Philippians 1 6. Anybody know what that says? He who has begun a good work. See, some of y'all tripping. It ain't no bad work. It's a, it's a good work. He who has begun a good work in you shall perform it until the day of Christ Jesus. All you got to ask yourself is who started it. Pastor Pat told y'all I'm a senior, I'm a high school counselor. And I'll tell you something, some of them kids are whoo. 
They, whew. We had some girls come to school one day, they didn't even bring book bags. <laughs> Our class an hour and a half long. They came to school and went in the bathroom, just waited. Four of them in one stall, just waiting. Because there was one girl they was going to jump on. And they figured it out. We ain't gonna, our feet ain't going to be on the ground. We're going to all stand on the toilet so you can't look under there and see us. And so they came to school, all of them in one stall, standing on the stall, quiet. And so somebody tipped us off. And so we went, you know, we standing outside. Y'all need to come on out. Ain't nobody say a word. Y'all need to come on out. So one of the lady, when our administrator walked in, knocked on the door, okay, they all come out of one stall. Said, Look, we're going to have to send you home. So go get your book bag. Miss Jane, we ain't bring no book bag because we knew as soon as we jumped on her and fought her, y'all was going to send us home anyway. So we didn't, <laughs> we didn't even need our book bags today. But when things like that happen, we got one question. Who started it? And it never starts with the punch. It always starts with the word. If they fight in school, it's because somebody said something before they got there. Now, they might not have said it with this, but they said it with this. What am I trying to get you to understand? We want to know whoever started it is the responsible party. And when the Bible says, he that has begun this good work in you shall perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. I got one question. Who started it? Because whoever started it is responsible. We used to say growing up, don't start nothing, won't be nothing. God has started something in you. 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 It might not feel good, but he started something in you. It might not look like he's working, but he has started something in you. And because he started it, he's going he's to finish it. He's going to finish it. Listen. God, listen, some men are sperm donors. They start a process and walk away. But God is not a purpose donor. He doesn't start a process for your purpose and then walk away. Ah, he, what he says he's going to do. If he told you it was going to happen, it's going to happen. If he told you it was going to be, it's going to be. Hold on to the word. I'm going to finish with this. Several years ago, we went up the Tweetsie Railroad, up Growing Rock area. I, I had to be about eight. We, were, we, we used to go on a church trip up there because we were close to the mountains. And we were up at Tweetsie, and there's this little boy. He had to be about seven. And you know how it is in the mountains. You got them steep drops, you know, when you're walking through. And this little boy was walking with an ice cream cone. It was a vanilla ice cream. Never forget it. Vanilla ice cream cone. Had to be 45 years ago when I saw this. He slipped. That boy rolled down about seven feet. He was rolling and spinning. But can I tell you something? <laughs> can I tell you something? That ice cream cone didn't hit the ground. That ice cream cone didn't hit the ground. Why? Because he had a purpose for that cone. He knew that no matter how many, how much I rolled and how much I turned, when I get myself right, I'm eating this ice cream. Why? Because he that is going to eat the ice cream shall continue it. <laughs> it's a, so let me finish with this. Let me finish with this. When it comes to what you're engaged in right now, I want you to ask, answer yourself the question, who started it? When it comes to your career, who started it? When it comes to your marriage, who started it? Ah, when it comes to your family, who started it? When it came to your education, who started it? When it came to the business, who started it? And when it came to the church, who started it? Because whoever started it is responsible. So if God says CFC is going to shake this community, guess what it's going to do? It's going to shake the community. Why? It's, ah, you got to understand that when God says something, it's just not information, it's empowerment. Which means that whatever God said, it's not just what he wants, but he's giving you what you need. Here it is, I'm finished. I believe that Christ's family church has a God said. And God says are precursors to God did. Which means that whatever he said is what he's planning to do. 
don't get frustrated, get motivated. Because what he said is his intention. Now, I'm finished. Sometimes the temptation is to get sidetracked. Because some of the hardest things to deal with is time. The meantime is a mean time. The meantime is a mean time. One more time. The meantime is a mean time. You know how many parents used to bake a cake and they feel like the cake was never get was never gonna get done. And you looking, and what they tell you, stop walking around in here. You're gonna make the cake fall. <laughs> what they telling you, get somewhere and sit down. But I'm so excited about it, I want to make sure it's happening. Can I tell you what God is saying? Get somewhere and sit down. Get somewhere and sit down. Because I'm doing what I'm going to do. You know what I found out? Listen, if it takes 45 minutes to bake, how long is it going to take? So am I looking in 35 minutes? I'm going to be frustrated. If God said it, he's going to do it. Stop getting caught up in how long it's taking. Listen. It I'm finished. This, this is it. This is the word of the Lord for some of you. You need to get alone. Rehearse the word that God said to you. Get back in a position where you hear God and you know he said what he said because God says have creative ability. God says proceed God did. God says turn failures into successes. Are y'all listening to me? And God says What's the last one I gave you? Guarantees of God's faithfulness. You got a word. Don't drop it. Don't drop it. Don't drop it. Don't drop it. Let's pray. Father, we thank you so much for your word today. I thank you for the opportunity to share. I thank you for reminding us today that what you said is... Every promise shall come to pass. You don't just speak haphazardly, God. Because when you speak, you create, you call, you enable, you make. That's the kind of God that you are. Father, we repent today for not believing that you were God enough to do what you were God enough to say. Forgive us, Lord. Now, I don't want to take anything for granted. There's some of you here today who may have never asked Jesus to save you and be your Lord. The Bible says that whosoever calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. That's a God said. And if you step into the God said today, you can be saved. Is there anybody in the room today that says, I've never asked the Lord to save me? Is there anybody? Let me see your hands. If that's you, you're in the room today. And you say, I've never asked Jesus to be my Savior and my Lord. And the reason I have is because it's been hard. I don't know if I can be a Christian. I don't know if I can do what other people do. I don't know if I can live the way other people. Listen, we're not talking about other people. Just acknowledge the fact that you need to be born again. Is there anybody in the room? I'm not taking anything for granted. If you're here today, you say, okay, I've been saved, but I've, I've backslidden. I'm just going to be honest with you. Now, I'm not going back in the world and done a whole lot of stuff that I shouldn't been doing, but I've backslidden in the air of my faith, and I've lost sight of what God said. Let me see your hands. Let me see your hands. Listen, when you, when you can be honest, you can be delivered. When you can be honest, you can be delivered. God, I've let some things slip. I've not followed you as faithfully as I should. I've not given you my whole heart as it relates to what you said. But I make up my mind today that I'm going to trust your word. Who's in here today that says I'm going to trust the word? Who's in here today that said I'm going back and rehearsing that word that God spoke over my life? I see your hands. Who's in here saying, God, I bumped my head and forgot that you are God and you're able to do exceeding abundantly. But I make up my mind today. I'm going to believe every word that you said. You ain't got to understand how. You just got to know he will. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Is there anybody in here that desires prayer today? I believe God spoke into our hearts. Is there anybody that desires prayer today? Is that anybody? Just stand right where you are if you, if you desire prayer. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, yes, yes. Yes. 
<laughs> Y'all already started the process. See, when you stood up, that was your faith in action. When you stood up, that was your faith in action. God has already met you at the point of your need because you were willing to stand up. Don't miss it. There's somebody else that needs to stand. Get out of your condemnation and stand on your feet and allow God to do what he wants to do in your life. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Can I tell you something? What you need from God is just like those fish that we talked about with, 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 with the Peter and Andrew. God has already put the stuff in place and is waiting on you to get there. God, I thank you for those that are standing. You know the request, you know the need. And because you're faithful, because you're faithful, everything that you said is. I pray healing, I pray deliverance. Who's standing for somebody that's sick? Who's standing for somebody that's dealing with sickness? I thank you for touching bodies right now. Cancer is not bigger than Jesus. We bless you for it right now in Jesus' name. God, I thank you that you have people walking out of condemnation and into freedom today. And they're trusting you to be what you said you'd be. Father, we bless you right now that you know every request, you know every, every ask today. And according to their faith, being unto them. Now, there's some standing here that says, God, I can't quite believe it. Well, we got you covered there because the scripture says there was a man that brought his son to Jesus and he said, help my unbelief. God's got you too. Father, I thank you for it. In Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name. And it is so. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. 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 Let me do this before I take my seat. Let me do this before I take my seat. I believe that the best days of this church are ahead. I believe that the best days for this ministry are ahead. I believe that what God, see, there's some things that you guys have been holding back on that's what the church needs. But when you step into doing what you do, you watch what church does. God says to you, your faithfulness has not been overlooked. Your anointing is not what makes you, not only what makes you special, but it's the way you carry yourself. You hold people in your heart. That's what draws people. That's what draws people. Stay you. The temptation when we don't see it is what do I need to change? Don't change you. You might need to change what, but don't change who. Can I have two more minutes? Listen, I, I got to sit down. This is what we did. Three months ago, on June 12th, our church was tripping. We weren't growing. We weren't progressing. I met with two of my leaders and said, let's kill it. Came to service the next Sunday. I had a little box set up like we were doing a funeral. I wore my black robe. Come on now. And we prepped people going into the week and said, okay, I want you to think about what the church has meant to you over the years. And so what we did is like when you go to a funeral, you give them two minutes to have their words. People talked about what the church meant to them. And then what I did is I went outside and got some dirt and some, some flowers and I sprinkled it over the box and we committed that church to the ground. Got everybody to go up, walk out of the building, come back in like we had gone to the gravesite, passed out some food and had a repast. And then we talked about what we needed to do to be different. And then we heard from people some things that we hadn't even considered. And we got into motion when we were willing to kill what was so we could grab what should be. We buried it. And you know what was crazy? It was on the Sunday of our church anniversary. I didn't even realize it. What am I saying? Don't be afraid to change. Don't be afraid to change. It's scary. It's uncomfortable. 
for this reward. I'm finished. I'm finished. Thank y'all so much for your time. Excellent. Come on, let's put our hands together for Pastor Juan. Awesome word on uh, this uh, afternoon. As we prepare to leave, we want to be a blessing to him and sow into his uh, life. You know how we do that. You can go online and sow a seed and bless him. Or you can share uh, in an offering as you leave out to be a blessing into his uh, life. I pray this week that we take this word and take some time to get before God. Get quiet before God and get what from him? A word from God the Lord. Remember that God says, right? Go back through Genesis this particular week and be reminded that what God said, he's faithful to bring it to pass. Amen. Praise God. Again, Pastor Juan, thank you for the word of the Lord and thank you for the personal word of the Lord to allow the Lord to lead you. Very proud of who you are, who God is in you and what you are allowing God to do in you and in the new creation ministry. Uh, again, come on one more time. Let's put our hands together for Pastor Juan. As we prepare to leave on today, don't forget on this coming Wednesday, we're online virtually. So we want to encourage you to come online and join us. Also, as Pastor Juan, as you leave out, Pastor Juan will be in the back. He has some of his books back there wired for success. Uh, feel free to purchase one and he'll make sure he signs one for you. Uh, as well. Again, thank God for all of our visitors. Thank you for coming. Please come back uh, and be with us. Listen, we're looking forward to next weekend as well. Couples, again, you that are here as well as you that are online, don't wait. Go ahead and simply register if you're going to be with us on Saturday. It's going to be an awesome uh, a time. We've got to get some numbers into them on this week on Tuesday. So please make sure you go ahead and get that done. And parents, don't forget about your teens. Get them registered so they can be a part of our outing uh, as well too. Mark, if you would, uh, when Kevin comes out, he's teaching the teens, we need to kick back up uh, the, the young men, the mentorship piece. I want to kick that uh, back up. We haven't done that, the young, the Timothy Big Brothers thing. We'll talk a little bit more about that, but I want you to connect with Kevin when he comes and we'll at least get it kicked off and get it started. So I just want to put that in the atmosphere so we can kind of get that rolling uh, and going. Amen. Praise God. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for the word of the Lord on the day. We receive it in our hearts. But God, we pray that after we receive it, help us to be like the woman with the issue of blood who was healed. God, she went after it. Father, I pray this week. There are so many times that we set out to spend time with you, to get before you, and we get distracted. God, I pray that we would not be distracted this week, but we would find our place in our time. We will make a place and a space for you to hear from you. And now with the blessings of Almighty God, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit rest upon you now in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. We love you. God's blessings to you. Don't forget your teens are here, and we look forward to seeing you on next weekend as well. God bless you. Pastor Juan will be outside in the foyer area if you want him to sign any of those books for you. Blessings to you.